significance of Apollo 17 to us, to the crew, is probably best summed up in, uh, in uh, the meaning of our patch as we uh, designed it and as the ideas that uh, we put into it. We felt certainly that Apollo 17, in spite of the fact that it were, it's the uh, last flight in the Apollo program, is really not the end, but, uh, but rather the beginning. It's, it's sort of a conclusion of the culmination of uh, what we consider man's greatest achievement, certainly uh, in our lifetime. And uh, looking in the future, these uh, achievements and the potentials of them have uh, literally no bounds. So we, uh, we have a bust of Apollo, of the god of Apollo, on our patch. Uh, he uh, represents not just Apollo, the Apollo program, but uh, uh, we feel that he represents, and uh, the uh, figure that he gives us on our patch, uh, mankind himself uh, represents knowledge, represents wisdom. And Apollo is looking out into the future. He's not looking behind. And he's not simply looking at the moon, someplace that uh, mankind has been and in a sense has uh, uh, a goal that mankind has accomplished. But he's looking on beyond the moon and into the future. Uh, we have uh, along with him, uh, up in the corner uh, of our patch, a, uh, a golden moon sort of representing uh, a golden era of space flight uh, that we are uh, bringing to a close now. Uh, superimposed upon this moon and uh, alongside uh, the bust of Apollo, alongside mankind, uh, we're a little bit parochial. We have a very contemporary uh, American Eagle, American Eagle whose uh, uh, wings are colored uh, with the blue and uh, covered with the red stripes of our flag, uh, and we have three white stars uh, uh, indented into the top of uh, this eagle's wings, and the significance there is to uh, remind us, not just in this country, and as I say parochially, parochially speaking, uh, the rest of the world, that the achievements that have happened in this past decade uh, were not by accident. Uh, America brought us where we are today, and the United States of America is going to lead us into the achievements and the accomplishments of the future. I feel the prime mission objective is the continued Apollo exploration of the uh, Earth's frontier in space, which presently is at the moon. And uh, that entails many sub-objectives. Uh, most important of this particular phase of, of uh, lunar exploration is the uh, surface activities, where we are trying to characterize or continue the characterization of the lunar surface. And also, uh, secondly, uh, the uh, regional characterization of that surface from orbit using a variety of uh, remote sensing equipment, as we call it. We've been training for about 12 months, maybe slightly longer than that. Uh, it's awful. It's hard to remember once you get involved in this thing how long you've been working on it. But of course, uh, the training for any uh, spaceflight mission begins several years before that. And for me, I guess the concentrated training for spaceflight began with Apollo 15 in the uh, December of 1969. Site selection in all the missions has been a fairly long and drawn out process. Uh, it entails uh, utilizing or the utilization by NASA of a number of scientific advisory groups and the inputs of uh, many in individuals across the country, uh, scientists primarily. Uh, the Taurus Littrow site uh, in, on the, uh, in the north eastern part of the moon at the edge of one of the large lunar bases, basins called Serenitatis was selected um, primarily as representing both a new part of the moon, which we had not explored yet, and having two major features that would allow us to hopefully complete, as near as that is possible to do, this first phase of lunar exploration. Uh, those features are the edge of the Serenitatis Basin, which is exposed uh, in some uh, six to 7,000 foot uh, mountain fronts, where we have a very strong possibility of finding some of the oldest, if not the oldest, rocks that uh, have so far been sampled and observed on the moon. And it also has, appropriately, I think, the 
a dark mantling deposit that is potentially some of the youngest volcanic rocks that we've seen on the moon, possibly even less than a billion years old. Now, this makes it appropriate, as I said, because it gives the last mission uh, the role of filling in the first and, and last chapters of a lunar history book that, that Apollo has the capability of uh, writing. And uh, I think we'll find it very exciting for that reason, and I think the scientist who helped select the site uh, maybe not entirely uh, uh, consciously when they selected it, but have picked an excellent site for the uh, last Apollo mission to the moon. Well, it's, it's somewhat difficult uh, to discuss the specifics of the site uh, without building some background in, in what we're really after on the moon. Uh, and I, and I, let, me, let me start, if I may, and this may seem to digress a little bit, but let me start, if I may, with the major purpose, scientific purposes, that we have for exploring the moon. And then I'll try to answer your question specifically. Um, the major purposes are, I look at, are threefold. Scientific now. We, of course, have many other objectives for lunar exploration than the scientific ones. But the scientific objectives are, one, to understand the history of the moon as it relates to the history of our Earth, in particular, and to the solar system in general, which, of which our Earth is part of. Now, by relating that history to the Earth, we, we have a chance, and we suspected this before we ever explored the Moon, and we now know it very, very, that it is specifically true, that in the Moon we have a window into the very early history of a planet in the near-Earth part of the solar system. That is a history which is almost totally obscured to us on Earth. Uh, the history from 3.3 billion years ago back to the beginnings of the Earth, say 4.6 billion years ago, is practically obscured completely on the Earth. On the Moon, that's where lunar history starts, and that's why it's exciting to Earth scientists who have for years been trying to find out what happened to the Earth in that very early time. So the Moon's history that we have studied so far its ancient history begins at about 3.2 or 3 billion years ago, and, now, and we have carried it back, we feel, about to 4.1 or so. So we're getting close to the, to the beginnings of the solar system, and therefore the beginnings of our Earth, and an understanding of the processes that really affected the total distribution of materials on the Earth that we now are trying to study through the mask of recent geologic processes. And it's in those materials that lie our resources. And in the long-term uh, understanding of the Earth so that we can exploit those resources and exploit them in obviously a, a now, I think, a much more enlightened way than maybe we did in the past. But nevertheless, we must exploit them in order to, pr to preserve the civilization we're used to. With, the, with understanding the moon, and we're not nearly far enough along now with the Apollo program, but we've made a start. And with that understanding, we now can start to think about, okay, how did that early history of the Earth affect the distribution of resources? That's, that's reason number one. A little bit involved, but, uh, but it is probably the primary material justification, scientific justification for going to the Moon. Secondly, and equally important related to the Earth, is an understanding of the history of the Sun. And within the soils of the Moon, and, and within the uh, rocks of the Moon, the very surface layers of the Moon, we are starting to see the effects of solar history on those materials. And there is no way we can get this information on the Earth or in orbit around the Earth because it's ha what we see there is what's happening now. What we see on the Moon, we can go through the record of the soil and see what has happened a hundred million years ago and up to probably at least a billion years ago in some places on the Moon. So, and, and if we don't understand the Sun and how it affects materials and what the history of that Sun has been, as it has affected our own environment on Earth, it's going to be very difficult to understand how to control and how to s preserve the environment that we now know, because the sun is still the prime mover, the prime force for change in the environment we have to deal with. So uh, it's very difficult to get specific on what individual pieces of knowledge that we've gotten out of the moon or what we will get out of the Skylab program when it flies, which will study the present day sun. It's, it's difficult to be specific, but it's this total knowledge about the, the sun that is so critical in understanding our own environment that we're after. Now finally, as in any major exploration program, whether it was the exploration of the American West or the exploration of Antarctica 
are now the exploration of the moon and, of, and the planets in general now, it's searching and expecting to find the unexpected. And that is really almost invariably what turns out to be the major payoff. We won't know it for 50, 100 years, but some of the things that we are finding and will find that were completely unexpected, that we didn't plan to find, will, will almost certainly be the most important things in the eyes of the history of science and very probably in the eyes of history of man.